Um, as you know, uh, Novonix today is a battery technology company. We have two primary areas of our business. One part of it is materials, so battery materials. Uh, the other part is battery technology and mainly testing technology. So they're the two parts of it. Uh, and we like to think of them as, as inextricably linked, uh, critical for one another. And we'll go into the details about that a little bit later. Um, so, but in terms of the materials business, we have an anode materials technology that delivers premium grade anode materials targeted for the EV market, which requires long life. So those of you that have been in the, uh, looking at the battery market and the EV market, um, it's really about the, the primary growth in batteries is being driven by EV. There's no question about that. And its requirements are long life. So as opposed to historical battery production was centred around your personal devices, laptops, cordless equipment and that type of equipment, um, which doesn't require as long a life as EV and grid storage. So our, our materials are specifically designed for high-end, long-life batteries. And the intellectual property we acquired uh, builds a material that outperforms the best materials in the market and which in turn go into the Tesla motor vehicle. They're, they're the benchmark as far as we're concerned. The main game there is to commercialise that product and bring it to market, and that's what our joint venture in uh, Tennessee is all about, called Pure Graphite. The other part of our business uh, is the technology side, where Novonix has a flagship product called HPC technology, high precision coulometry, and it really is breakthrough technology taking the R&D for battery uh, industry forward. And it's only been released to the market after Chris and, and Professor Jeff Dunn and team invented it four or five years ago. So it hasn't been in the market long, but it's, it's now proliferating the battery world. Essentially, all major battery makers uh, and all companies starting to spend time heavily on battery R&D are buying Novonix's flagship technology, HPC technology. So we have really two really good products in terms of the material as well as technology. And our business is about taking and scaling that and, uh, to market. As a legacy, we have a legacy asset in our natural graphite asset. So those of you that know the company going back to when we listed in 2015, then it was really focused on a natural graphite deposit. So within, within a year of doing due diligence on that, we confirmed we had a very good global natural graphite deposit, no question. Um, but we also identified the opportunity to, uh, I guess, go downstream and participate in the value adding to what you do to concentrate out of a mine. And for us today, our capital is being deployed to that manufacturing. And in terms of the um, legacy asset, I guess you could call it today, the, the world-class Mount Dromedary natural graphite deposit, we're looking at uh, transacting with that asset. Uh, ideally, uh, bringing in a significant other party that's experienced with developing asset, mining assets, that want to develop more in the battery materials sector and want to take this forward. So um, our capital is going to the manufacturing, the tech, and, and corporately we're dealing with that legacy asset. So that's really um, Novonics at a very high level where we are uh, today. Just, uh, we haven't got the presentation going yet. Um, but I'll, so I'll just talk to it. But the next slide I want to cover with you is just our customer base. One of the things that you get with Novonix is we're a company that already have has customers. We, ha we have uh, technology that's being sold all around the world with customers in 14 countries. And more importantly, those customers are the who's who of battery making and equipment manufacturing in the world. So, for example, just to put that in context, the, the top four battery, four or five battery makers in the world are Panasonic, number one, CATL, number two. Uh, then you've got LG and Samsung and SK Innovation. So that's half the battery production of the world. Um, they all buy our the technology that Chris invented with um, Jeff Dahn, the HPC technology that Novonix sells today. Um, and all the other battery companies are lining up. So you've got Sony, you've got all the Americans... They're lining up to buy this technology essentially, and Chris will take you through the detail of why the technology developed and what, what's so good about it. So I won't go into it, but let Chris explain it. Um, the other thing is we have companies now buying the technology to help them select the best batteries, not to develop them, but to select. 
So you we're talking about all the big automakers are now buying our technology to assist in that process, but also we have the electronics companies, so the batteries that are going in your mobile phones, your laptops. So we have a very good base, I guess, flagship technology, which is uh, starting to proliferate the global market. So, and just to tie, and then I'll hand over to Chris, just to tie that together, so, and the importance of have us having both of these technology and the materials business in that, the technology itself creates an advantage for a materials company to innovate materials. I'd say it, it basically accelerates your R&D tenfold. So Chris will take you through the details of it, but it's true. And that's why we're developing really good quality materials. But they also have the customers. So they're the customers are buying this technology to test how efficient their product is. But they're the customers we want to sell the materials to in the future. So that's why this is a very important interrelationship between the two businesses. And then from a commercial side, in terms of how big is this business, can it be, and where are we going to make most of the money and value for shareholders, it's in the supply chain, it's in the materials business. So that business has potential to be a multi-billion dollar revenue business. No question about it, we'll take you through that. The technology business will not be that big, but it can get into the tens of millions of dollars to 50 million, say. So we don't see that as the big commercial opportunity. It's been a nice, profitable business, but it's really more a strategic, technical enabler and a relationships enabler for, for the bigger business. So that's uh, Novonics. Just uh, seeing we haven't got the presentation, I won't go any further with that. I'll just really hand over to Chris, and what I'd like him to do is give you a bit of backstory on the Novonics technology and how and why, and, and the latest on the company, Chris, what you're doing in Halifax and what's happening at Pure Gravite on the ground, if you can do that. The company started in, in Canada around the high-precision geometry technology that we developed at the university. And the big question that we asked ourselves at the time was, how are we going to, in a university environment, do research on materials and cell designs that are going to impact batteries that need to last 10 plus years. As the market was changing from consumer electronic cells to electric vehicle and energy storage cells, this was the big question. How can we do meaningful research in a short amount of time that's going to impact that type of lifetime? So we developed equipment that could measure the efficiency of the battery in the early cycles much more accurately than traditional equipment. And what that allowed us to do was measure the stability of the chemistry and the rate of degradation of the chemistry um, in only a matter of a few weeks, whereas traditional testing, you'd have to run the battery for six months or a year or longer. So for about five years in the university, we were publishing research, working on different electrolyte materials and changing the chemistry of the battery and showing that in three weeks, we could decide which electrolytes were giving us the longest life batteries that would then take six months or nine months or a year to validate through traditional methods. But at that point, if it was nine months later, we had already iterated a dozen times on the chemistry and moved through so many more samples. So we were showing, it really put our research group at the forefront of electrolyte development because we were able to move so much faster than any other research group because of this technology. So when we started doing this work, and Jeff Don is a very strong industry and in the or you know relationship with the industry and very high credentials from his time in industry, um, people started coming and saying, "How can we buy this technology? We want to do this type of work." Enough big companies came uh, knocking on the door that we decided to start the company and build this technology. And as Phil went through, we have our our list of customers. It's really the the who's who in the uh, in the industry, right? So. Now the equipment company is, is providing those, that test equipment and sales and also services to these companies, as well as now making investments to move back toward materials development. So our core competencies coming out of the university were really in electrolyte development. So the announcements this week were, are kind of surrounding this shift in focus to not only have our equipment business running, but also move uh, our facility in Nova Scotia into the materials development space as well. What Phil might talk a little bit about in our pure graphite joint venture was really that the ability for uh, Coolometrics, our joint venture partner, to have developed technology so quickly was the ability to build batteries, to or, you know, process materials 
then build batteries, and then use this high-precision chromometry technology that we helped him deploy in his labs all in one roof. So it took his whole turnaround time from processing a material to building a battery and testing it and knowing whether you've made an improvement in the lifetime or not down to you know two months. Instead of traditionally, you'd have to process material, send it out to a battery maker, get your cells back after months, and then do traditional testing, which would then take six months or more. So that cycle time would be you know nine months or a year. So he was able to move through things much more quickly and efficiently doing research in this way. So we're setting up a similar system for our projects that we're going to be pursuing in Nova Scotia surrounding electrolyte and silicon materials, all to parallel with the work that's going on at the joint venture. So the graphite material that's being produced at the joint venture is the primary anode material, and it has to the you know, performance of that material in the cell is really governed by the electrolyte formulation. That's the mediator between the cathode and the anode material. And so it needs to be paired with an appropriate electrolyte for whatever the application requires, higher power or low temperature or long life. And that'll depend on the the customer's needs. And as well, people in the space are going to want to move to higher capacity materials by including silicon-based materials as an additive to the graphite. So that can help improve the energy density of the cells. So we want to focus on these areas that have parallels to pure graphite and can kind of sell into the same structure, either as providing not just a graphite material, but a full anode solution with integrated silicon, as well as even a full technology package, including, you know, an electrolyte and a full cell design. So we've set up commercial grade battery equipment to build cells, both 18650 cylindrical cells and small pouch cells like you'd find in your phone uh, at our facility in Halifax. This shows a few pictures of the the mixing equipment, the electrode coating equipment and slitting equipment. So this was up and running near the end of June in our facility building small pouch cells to to do this research and development in. So the announcements we put out this week are kind of surrounding these new materials efforts. So there were three announcements that we put out. One was the first about commissioning the cell line, being up and running and building cells now at our facility in Halifax. The second is that we've just received about a half million dollar grant from the Canadian government to help support materials research in electrolyte and silicon. So we've applied under one of their programs to uh, support core R&D efforts, and that'll help fund the labor to build out a team to expand our team, really. Uh, and work on these materials development projects. So then in parallel with that, I think it was just this morning, I guess, we announced that we're going to be sponsoring the research of Mark Overback at Dow, Dalhousie University. So he's one of the two primary battery groups right now working at Dalhousie, Jeff Don, who we spun the company out of and I worked with working on electrolyte materials. It was now working, it was now sponsored by Tesla Motors. And Mark Overback is currently sponsored by 3M Company. He worked at 3M before uh, becoming a professor at Dalhousie, and he led a lot of their activities in development of their silicon anode materials that, they, that they're trying to supply to the market. So Mark has extensive material science background in silicon materials, and now when he moved to the university, he's expanded that breadth to beyond lithium ion material, so sodium ion, magnesium ion, as well as solid state batteries as well as cathode materials for batteries. So now he has a group of about 12 students working at the university in a, in a spread of battery materials. So through this sponsorship agreement, uh, we would have first right to all IP that gets developed uh, out of his lab in the battery materials space. So our goal is to, to combine all of these aspects into being able to develop our pure graphite materials for anodes, combine them with silicon materials, offer those to customers, keep a finger out in the future lithium ion, beyond lithium ion space, things like solid state batteries and uh, sodium or magnesium ion. Having students work in that in, at the university is a great way to um, stay involved in that space. It's a very low cost way to run that uh, research and development. So all of this in the Dalhousie is about a 20 minute drive from our facility uh, in the area. So, you know, Mark's research will be able to be scaled up at our facility. We can build full-scale cells for them and help support that, that R&D element, both in the kind of public sector of the university and in the private sector of our lab. 
So that's that's the latest about what's going on at at our facility in Canada. You know, sales are strong, new products are coming out, but the really exciting thing is is shifting back over into the material science space, which is really what Dave Stevens, my co-founder, and I, our backgrounds are in. Both of us are battery scientists by training, and, and now we're getting the opportunity to move back into that space, hopefully work with Pure Graphite and help you know enhance the opportunity in selling those materials, as well as target new new materials in the battery sector, right? That's good, Chris. And those other sectors other than the anode are potentially big, as big or bigger than the anode market itself. So by doing this, we're doubling and tripling the market ex- opportunities for yep. company. But Chris, well, you, you should give an update on Pure Graphite, sure. where that business is at on the ground. So this is kind of where we want to be moving with the with the Pure Graphite business. So I was just there on Thursday and Friday, along with uh, Bob Natter, who's on the board of Pure Graphite with me, as well as on the board of Novonix. Uh, we were just approving the orders for all the equipment needed for a 1,000-ton-a-year facility. So that equipment should be hitting the ground at the end of this calendar year in November, December, and then commissioning and turning on that capacity in Q1 of 2019. So our partner in the JV, Coolometrics, continues to work with these beachhead customers who are doing their cell development efforts, you know, involving our materials. And their timelines for moving into production are li- looking like they're lining up well with when we're going to be able to turn on capacity in, in early Q1 of 19. So in, in the in the year 2019, we want to be able to uh, be producing our 1,000 ton a year capacity. So we should be able to do revenue in next calendar year of about 10 to $20 million. And we'll only be doing 1,000 tons a year of capacity relative to the market forecast of 150,000 tons. So then this, this shows where we want to be able to scale to 25,000 tons and then further. And, you know, what those projected potential revenues are relative to the market size. And you can see in none of these forecasts are we really saying that we're going to stake a, you know, a huge 30, 40, 50 percent market share. These are all, you know, conservative, conservative estimates to supplying into a reasonable fraction of the market. So the BCHEC customers are lining up well. We've had meetings with uh, the bigger players. All of those customers, potential customers, I should say, are basically in the stage of looking to sample material and know that we are production capable. So that's why our core focus is on getting this thousand ton a year capacity up and running, being able to actually generate revenue out of that because we have smaller beach egg customers ready before approaching these, you know, big players. And then we'd be able to scale on demand. We're still working a lot on the technology. We have technology for the processing that works well and is scalable but there's more efficient ways to scale, and we're, we're always looking for those opportunities that would help kind of drive our CapEx down during, during the, ex, the expansion phase.